What's up guys, welcome to a new video. So today we're going to be going through the three most common mistakes made with Facebook ads, especially beginners, because when you first get started, Facebook ads is, is like a minefield, it's pretty overwhelming. There's so many different things to kind of take in. And even when you do kind of get a sense or feel like you are doing well and things are going well, then things can pretty much change overnight and it can leave you kind of confused and not really sure what's going on. So hopefully today then I can shed some light on some of the most common mistakes I see people making um, and help you be a bit more profitable and a bit more successful with your Facebook ad campaigns. With that being said then guys, thanks for tuning in and let's jump straight into point number one. So I'm gonna be referring to my phone. This is where I make my notes for pretty much everything in life, not just business. So forgive me if I keep looking down. And the first mistake I see people making then is with testing. Arguably the most important part of running Facebook ad campaigns is being able to test audiences and test creatives correctly. Because if you don't test them correctly, it's gonna to lead to a false output and ultimately it's gonna to lead to you making the wrong decisions. The most common decision you have to make when you test an audience is whether it's worthwhile scaling it and moving forwards with it. So if you don't test it correctly, then you may end up putting hundreds of pounds into an audience that just isn't going to work. And on the flip side of this, you may end up stopping the ad for a particular audience that potentially could go on to make you thousands of pounds. So it's really important that you understand testing, the kind of things that you're looking for, and then how to measure them as well. So one of the main things you have to keep an eye on is how much of an audience you're going to test because this is something I see probably the majority of the people. So I do one-to-ones with people and I would say anywhere in the region of kind of like 80 to 90% of people test audiences that are way too broad. And as a result, they don't end up testing enough of that audience. So they can't gather enough data about an audience and therefore you can't make accurate decisions about whether you need to scale it or not. Let's give you an example then is if you were to release a product and you invited say 500,000 people into one room and you wanted to ask their opinion on your product so you could get an accurate representation of whether people would buy it or not, you wouldn't just ask 10 of those people and then use that to kind of base everything, all of your information on as an accurate representation of the audience as a whole. And that's what people are doing with Facebook ads. So to kind of illustrate this or how that would translate across, if you're testing an audience size of 2 million with a CPM of let's say 10 pounds that's pretty average across the board it plus it makes the maths easy to work out so you've got an ad set with an audience size of 2 million people the average CPM is going to be 10 pounds so if you spend 10 pounds on that ad set a thousand people in theory are going to see your ad if you do the maths a thousand people into 2 million works out at 0.0005% of that total audience so it's not an accurate representation of whether that's a good audience or not because those first thousand people that see your ad complete could be complete random people that have absolutely no interest and that would lead you to switching that ad set off and saying it's a bad audience when in reality if you continue to run that ad set for another 10 pounds and show it to another thousand people those thousand people might be interested in your product you never know the point I'm trying to put across here is that a thousand people into two million is such a tiny percentage it's not enough data it's not an accurate representation of that audience as a whole if you compare this against say an audience size of 200,000 people you spend the same amount of money with the same CPM, so a thousand people into 200,000, it works out at a percentage of 0.005%. So it's still a tiny percentage, but it's actually 100 times more than the previous example I showed you. So what that leads to is more accurate information and a more accurate representation of whether that audience is a good one or not. Another reason why this is super important for beginners is because Facebook, the way the fix Facebook pixel works and is set up, it works based on pre previous information. So if you have no previous information, no previous data, essentially it's starting with cold turkey. And the way to think of this is like, if you had 2 million people in a room and you had to go through that room and find somebody with the name of Dave, versus a room size of 200,000 people and you had to go into that room and find someone with the name Dave, you're gonna find somebody in that smaller room a lot faster because it's a smaller audience. There's gonna be less people that you have to ask before you find somebody that has the name Dave. And the way this kind of translates into Facebook is the smaller audience you have to test, the less time, the less money it's gonna take before you find somebody that actually wants to make a purchase. Now I know that's a pretty weird way of explaining things, but I'm just trying to 
make it as clear as possible if there's anything you're not sure on make sure you do leave a comment below i reply to everybody so i will see your comment and i will respond to you as well again i just want to try and make this as crystal clear as possible now some of you may be thinking well how do you scale an audience size of 200,000 people or smaller the point is that you start with these smaller audience sizes until you see the purchases coming in until facebook becomes a bit more efficient at finding people or picturing putting together kind of like the pieces of what your ideal customer is and the better it is at doing that then the larger audiences you can target and be successful with number two is the interest so again another biggie i see people making mistakes with all the time is they just pick completely random interests um, target them on facebook with super broad audiences and then they struggle to understand why they're not seeing the results they hoped for when it comes to picking interests and there's definitely a logic behind it and they're not just random either these interests contain certain people and depending on what the interest is called depending on what it's linked to depends on what sort of person will be included in that audience to give you an example then let's use the golf niche i know i always use the dog niche and the golf niche on this channel but they're the two niches that i have like a decent knowledge of so they're the ones that i'm comfortable with picking interests in um, and this is one of the kind of advantages of knowing your niche well before you go into it to sell products in because obviously if you have experience within a certain niche they will become easier when it comes to picking products like because i've played golf for so long i have friends that are golfers i can see a golf product and immediately tell you realistically and be pretty accurate as well and um, whether somebody would realistically actually buy that and how much they would pay for it too and that's because I have experience within a niche when you go into a niche you have no clue about so if I was to go into cosmetics I wouldn't have a clue what kind of interests what kind of brands um, to go after and I would need the help of somebody like my girlfriend who obviously spends time and money within that niche anyway going back to my point of picking interests within a particular niche so taking the golf niche for example um, if you're not a golfer then this will be a good illustration of how to pick interests and how not to pick them so I could say to you right now Tiger Woods and even if you you have no interest in golf whatsoever you probably know who tiger woods is because he's quite famous therefore the chances are when you target tiger woods on facebook there's going to be a lot of people included within that audience within that interest that have no interest in golf and therefore they're not going to buy your golfing product whereas if i was to say to you ricky fowler he is another golfer but he's not as common so the chances are you don't know who he is therefore the chances are when you target ricky fowler as an audience as an interest on facebook it's going to have a higher percentage of people who are actually interested in golf because only the keen golfing enthusiasts will know who ricky fowler is therefore they're more likely to be included in that audience and not the people who aren't interested in golf if that makes sense and what that leads to is a higher hit rate with your ads it leads to your audience being more engaged having more of a connection with your ads which leads to cheaper cpms cheaper clicks and ultimately um, cheaper sales better results let's give you another quick example then of how this would apply to another niche let's take the dog niche for example you can target pages like i love of dogs you don't have to own a dog to love dogs therefore when you target those i love pages they won't necessarily contain a high percentage of people who actually own dogs because you don't need to own a dog to love dogs and therefore that audience that interest will have a high percentage of people who don't own a dog therefore they're not going to be interested in your product and your ad when they see it whereas if you were to target interests like dog walking the chances are the only people interested in dog walking are people who actually own dogs there's not many people who go dog walking without a dog so when you target interests like those ones that are purely related to owners of dogs the people who are most likely to buy your products then targeting those interests you're going to have a higher hit rate because they're going to contain a higher percentage of people who actually own dogs and they're going to be the people that obviously are interested in your product again i hope that makes sense hopefully i've explained that well enough any questions whatsoever please do make sure you comment them below point number three then guys is ad creatives so too many times i see people testing with Facebook ads and they'll only ever test one single ad creative and one single audience they won't get very many results if at all any and then they'll just kind of make the decision or kind of come to the conclusion that Facebook ads don't work or the audience doesn't work or the product doesn't work when in reality if you follow anyone who is successful with Facebook the chances are they will be running multiple versions of the same ad creative but they'll just kind of make those tweaks make those little changes whether it's the word in the image the 
the colorization and the sequence of images or the sequence of the video or the way the video is structured and these tiny little things can make a significant difference to how well your ad sets perform so typically when it comes to an ad on Facebook there's two parts there's the written part at the top and then there's the visual part whether that's an image a carousel a video a collection whatever it is and both of these need to be tested in multiple variations so when you're creating a video for your product the sequence or the kind of different clips and the way they're arranged you need to be able to test in this to see which kind of grasps your customers attention the most and holds on to their attention so you could be looking at things like watch time engagement your CPM your cost per link clicks all the kind of indicators that your audience is actually interested in your ad one of the common mistakes I see people especially when I look at their ads um, is that they take too long to kind of show their actual products they'll have this big build up of 10 seconds of how their product is really good but they don't actually demonstrate how the product works or the benefits of it and that's kind of what you need to get across to your customer immediately because you people have very short attention spans plus on a platform like Facebook you're competing for their attention against the meme pages against funny videos against their friends sending them messages plus any particular notifications they might receive on your phone so unless your ad commands that attention from your customer you're going to lose their interest and you're not going to make the purchase typically then at the top of your ad where you have the written part the very first kind of line or two is what is typically referred to as the hook and this is typically the first thing the customer Customer will read and once they've read that or once the part read that they will subconsciously decide whether they're interested in it or not and if they're not they'll just scroll past it move on to the next thing and if they are then they're going to give you a few extra seconds to continue reading or to watch your video or to look at the image or take into account what it is you're trying to sell so again that's another thing you need to test is the hook the kind of question you're asking the kind of emojis you're using you could use some form of like a shocking statement when i first started in drop shipping there was this company in the us and every single one of the ads started with um, I think it was over 6 million cats and dogs are killed on US roads every single year, which is quite a shocking statement because that is a significant amount of animals, a significant amount of dogs and cats. So when somebody reads that immediately, you're going to grasp their attention. So keep chopping and changing the hooks in different creatives and see which captures your audience's attention the best. And with that being said, then guys, I'm going to wrap the video up. Um, there's no need to make this video any longer than it needs to be. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully I have... Um, taught you something new or perhaps at least giving you something else to think about or something to consider next time you run your Facebook ad campaigns um, if you did enjoy the video please do make sure you hit that like button please do make sure you subscribe as well for regular content and of course any comments questions video suggestions whatever it is post them down below I will see them and I will respond to you finally then to finish the video off I just want to mention that I do run a course that comes with my full support and guidance so if you are looking for that kind of all-in-one um, package to help you build an e-commerce business on Shopify make sure you check out my e-com academy and there will be a link in a video description below that being said thanks again for watching and see you in the next one